to this check-in event from the Wisdom Group. And thank you, Shannon, for the excellent meditation. Soon we will be sharing some of the group's key service activities. But first, for contemplation and reflection by those sharing and by those in the audience, a question to be considered throughout the event is what is your understanding of the plan and how does your understanding reflect itself in your service? Now to begin, David will share a keynote overview to set the tone. Thank you, Ray. And thank you to everyone for being here today. In getting ready to try to do a keynote overview, there was a quote from Alice Bailey's work, Discipleship in the New Age, that popped up from another member. And it made me really think long and hard about my own question. So I'd like to read that simple quote in order to begin. It states, my brother, link humility with this task. Seek not to link groups with your group, but recognize your group and all other similar groups as parts of a worldwide spiritual movement, which when it reaches momentum, results in unity for all. A super organization which emphasizes unity is the last thing to be desired. A multiplicity of living organisms held loosely together by cooperation, constant communication, and possessing identity of goal and of purpose is what the world needs today. And I think about 75 years later since, or 80 years since that was said, it still seems highly relevant. And then this led me to the question, what then is the goal and purpose of similar groups within a worldwide spiritual movement such as the Wisdom Group? And some observations brought these ideas into focus. The principle of freedom within structure relates a synthesis of brotherhood, of servant or cooperative leadership, and the ashram of synthesis by balancing individual freedom with collective harmony and purpose. And what is the dialogue then among these core ideas? Freedom within structure exhibits the synthesis of brotherhood, cooperative leadership, and the ashram of synthesis. There are some core themes and principles. The establishing of a community aimed at unity. From brotherhood, we get emphasis of mutual support, shared values, and unity among members. From cooperative leadership, we create a community where the leaders are serving and fostering unity and collective growth. The selfless service expressed by compassion encourages supporting and uplifting each other and often prioritizing the needs of group in a spirit of brotherhood. And cooperative leadership prioritizes the well being of others by serving selflessly. The spiritual growth and enlightenment 
under the influence of the ashram of synthesis, aims to elevate the human consciousness, integrating diverse truths into a unified spiritual understanding, a wisdom of combined mind and heart. Freedom from boundaries or their transcendence is achieved by these three factors with different target endpoints. Brotherhood seeks to overcome divisions with a sense of belonging. Servant leadership breaks down hierarchical barriers. And the ashram of synthesis supports the synthesizing of di diverse spiritual paths into one cohesive whole. These ideas intersect both in practice and application. Creating the unified community, all three support an inclusive community that includes individuals, not only of diversity, but with simple, common, spiritual, shared goals. The implementation of the divine plan, the ashram of synthesis, applies the synthesized energy from the three rays, first, second, and seventh, and ye are used to manifest that divine plan with disciple servings as channels for energy in a spirit of brotherhood and servant leadership. The cultivating of spiritual evolution is another common theme. Synthesis, the blending of diverse spiritual truths accelerates the evolution of consciousness, moving individuals from a state of separation to one of unity. Group consciousness, the achieving at one mint with others from one's own level of development and leading to group consciousness. And the unique and dynamic ability for spiritual evolution becoming a precipitating agent a new energy of the divine plan. And this energy then focused through the disciples, applying it to specific situations and circumstances to manifest the divine plan, even if other situations may seem opposed to such a plan. Allowing and tolerating these intersections continue to integrate into the broad principle of freedom within structure. The concept of freedom within structure aligns these intersecting practices through individuals who are exercising their freedom to express unique spiritual paths within a supportive and cohesive structure of the ashram community. This structure supports individual growth, ensuring that personal spiritual journeys are respected and nurtured, promotes collective harmony by maintaining a balanced environment where diverse paths converge and harmonize, and then facilitates divine purpose by guiding the manifestation of the divine plan through a structured yet flexible means, allowing for dynamic interaction and adaptation. In summary, the intersection of brotherhood, cooperative leadership, the ashram of synthesis, creates a powerful framework 
for cultivating unity, selfless service, and spiritual growth. This integration ensures that diverse spiritual paths converging in such a way that transcends boundaries, promotes collective growth, and manifests the highest spiritual truths. The principle of freedom within structure enhances this framework by balancing individual freedoms with the cohesive structure needed to achieve shared spiritual goals. The fire of synthesis will alchemize the outworn forms in its releasing of life's irrepressibility. Now let's learn of some of the experiments and initiatives currently active in the wisdom group. Thank you. Wonderful, David. And thank you very much for the lovely keynote. Just before we continue, I would like to reiterate the question to be uppermost in everybody's mind today. What is your understanding of the plan? And how does your understanding reflect itself in your service? Something to be held uppermost in your mind throughout this session. We now come to the round table sharing and dialogue Lynn, would you guide us through the ashram of synthesis? All right. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, David, for that wonderful overview. I'm going to talk a little bit about the ashram of synthesis. David's already mentioned uh, a number of important points. Uh, just to get this one question out of the way, uh, my understanding of the plan I'll just put it in uh, very briefly, right human relations. If we are promoting, establishing, working on right human relationships, whatever our service activity, whatever our interaction with anyone, then I think we are manifesting that divine plan. Now, the um, ashram of synthesis, the information that we have about the ashram of synthesis comes from Lucille Cedarcrans. And she was a communicating station, as she called, for Master R from around 1948 to around 1975. Uh, Greg can correct me if I'm wrong about that. Uh, the end, she stopped uh, doing some of the work in the 60s, but then picked it up again a little bit later on. Um, anyway, she was, according to Master R, she had been trained for several hundred years uh, as a communicating station or a link between hierarchy and humanity, and she was quite adept at it, uh, very gifted. And uh, one of the things that Master R um, related about humanity is that we are at a extraordinarily momentous point in our evolution now, that uh, we are on the verge of the manifestation of a new kingdom in nature. This is one of the most momentous events since uh, the human kingdom appeared on Earth some 18 million years ago. And apparently we had another opportunity back in Atlantis 100,000 years ago to um, establish that kingdom at that time. But for whatever reason, humanity took a, an oppositional path, and we've been treading that path for the last 100,000 years. But now, once again, we are poised to manifest that kingdom. And um, fortunately, apparently, uh, the lords of karma have deemed that humanity has worked off most of the karma from that uh, past decision of theirs, and we are now... Um, ready and able to step onto a path of, of joy and rapid evolution. So it's, it's uh, you know, very promising that this time we are going to make the, the right choice and we, we will be able to move into a new era of human civilization here. 
Now, when that uh, ashram um, long ago, or maybe I didn't mention that there was an ashram, a, a correlation of the ashram of synthesis back in Atlantis, it said, and that um, ashram was destroyed, the outer vestiges were destroyed, and the membership of that ashram was said to enter into human evolution at the lowest level of human experience. And slowly over those uh, many centuries, work its way back, evolve its way back to a state where it could once again respond to the note of the ashram of synthesis. So around 1945, Master M, Master DK, Master R formulated um, what they call the new thought form presentation of the wisdom and created the ashram of synthesis. And back then it was selected disciples from the three ashrams that were working that had a special affinity for synthesis. And they were the core of the ashram of synthesis. And uh, it's said by Master R that by the year 2000, all of the disciples in all of the three ashrams would be working um, together as and in the ashram of synthesis. Now, the alignment um, for the energy of synthesis comes from a higher triangle of the avatar of synthesis and the planetary logos and the Christ. And it's the three masters at the heart of the ashram of synthesis, M, D, K, and R, who receive that um, energy of synthesis from the higher triangle. And then they distribute it to humanity through seven disciples on the thread. One of those disciples was Lucille Cedar Kranz. And then the probationers, disciples, and aspirants who are affiliated with those disciples on the thread carry that energy of synthesis further into humanity through their own service activities and their own life and affairs. And those uh, disciples who are affiliated with Lucille and her teachings are called the Wisdom Group. Now, we've speculated a little bit about who some of the other disciples on the thread might be. And uh, one possibility is Eileen and Peter Caddy, because interestingly, at the exact same time in the early 1960s, they were overshadowed by the exact same spiritual presences, uh, the Master R and an entity called John. Um, and they were establishing centers. Uh, and I mean, even in, in uh, David Spangler, was he was the communicating aid uh, station. He wasn't called that. He was called, I forget what they, transmissions, I think is what uh, they were called. Uh, but anyway, they the transmissions from Master R at that time via David Spangler um, said that the uh, Findhorn community was an outpost of the Brotherhood of Synthesis. And, you know, Lucille used the term the ashram of synthesis, but, you know, I think it's pretty clearly that those were, were definitely related. Now, another possibility is Roberto Asagioli. Um, he was obviously a close disciple of Master DK and also created the system called psychosynthesis, a synthesis of all of the uh, psychological and spiritual elements in the human being, very much related to the energy of synthesis. Um, another possibility is the Aurobindo in the mother and his yoga of synthesis and their creation, the, the center that uh, the mother created uh, in India, Auroville. And so that, that's another uh, possibility. But, you know, these are just hypotheses. So as far as the purposes of the ashram of synthesis, um, there's a number of purposes. Some of them are a little hard to get a handle on. But uh, one of the purposes is to shift human organization from the third ray to the seventh ray. You know, the third ray is a sequential mathematical process 
it's kind of like a business plan. Okay, here's the goal that we want. So we need so many resources and we need to do this first and then we need to do this. We need some marketing and then we need some production and then we need salespeople. And then we we end up with, with uh, our desired goal if all goes well. The seventh ray um, works in a different, ray, uh, different way. It um, works harmonically and it's establishing a um, sounding a note subjectively on mental, astral, and etheric levels, and then allowing the result to manifest organically on the physical plane. And um, it seems magical, and it is magical, because a lot of the steps in the process are not, they don't appear on the physical plane. So you know, it just sort of seems to come out of nowhere, but it actually, it's a process of of subjective work using thought and color and sound to create an effect, to create a form. The second uh, purpose is to shift human civilization from... Are you talking to me, Ray? One minute to go, please. Oh, one minute to go. Okay, good. Thank you for that warning. Um, the uh, second is to shift civilization from a sixth ray to a seventh ray. And the sixth ray was that uh, um, ideation of divine ideals. And the seventh ray is the embodiment, the manifestation of those divine ideals in uh, dense physical form. Um, another... Um, purpose is um, meeting the opposition to the energy of synthesis. Very interesting process. It's uh, uh, They call it precognizing the seeds of opposition in the presentation and relating that to the correspondence in the body of humanity. And so what they do is they take a particular um, issue, an opposition to the divine plan, and focus it in cooperation with the Lords of Karma, focus it into a group of disciples. And those disciples um, overcome that opposition by the application of the wisdom. And, um, you know, Lucille's group struggled with uh, financial issues. How does a disciple support themselves in the world? Um, you know, that's an opposition. Well, I can't afford to serve the divine plan. I have to make a living. I have kids. So they they uh, worked on that. They weren't terribly successful. I think Findhorn was much more successful, where when they needed something, uh, you know, a bag of cement would roll off the truck and they would have it. And so they were, I think, applying some of those, uh, the wisdom more effectively. Um, another possible example of that is truth and reconciliation, where... You know, here's this apartheid state with this terrible history of violence and aggression, and by coming at it in an entirely different way, by truth, reconciliation, a radical forgiveness, they achieved a whole different uh, outcome. And it's been adopted all over the world now. Okay, so the last, I'll just mention them. The last two is the uh, creating a new path of evolution within the etheric uh, network of humanity. That's a very interesting process. And then the externalization of the hierarchy. Back to you, Ray. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks very much. Uh, Henry will share with us. Um, sorry, just before I start that, I would ask the um, sharers to be mindful of time, please. It's uh, going to get us way out of sync if we don't keep our eye on that. Henry will share the center of synthesis. Thanks, Ray. <clears throat> And thanks, Lynn. <clears throat> Lynn, that was very comprehensive, even though we're constrained by time. Um, and in speaking of the center of synthesis, um, there's we're kind of confronted by having to to talk about it from within two evolutions. One is the evolution of our own understanding of it. And then another evolution is the center itself, I think, is evolving. So 
this is simply an interpretation. Um, it's not to be taken as, you know, the one and only truth about it or anything like that. It's just my interpretation. But let's go through a few, a few of the points about it. Um, it seems to be, the center of synthesis seems to be an agent of reception and distribution for the energies of synthesis, like Lennon was talking about, that the ashram of synthesis has uh, augmented and made more available. So um, it also seems to be a world center. Um, but it has specific locales too. Um, and there may be as many as nine locales. Um, and Lucille and her group were led to one of these locales uh, in Estes Park, Colorado, in the United States. And when they got there, then they received quite a bit of information through Lucille. Um, about the nature of the center, especially the one in Estes Park, but also the general sense of it. And um, all of that was collected into, um, you know, it was recorded um, on tape, transcribed and collected into a big file. Uh, and that's what we've used to kind of get an idea of what it's all about. Um, the structure, like, like pretty much every center, is said to be that of a nucleus and a petal and petals. And they talked about four. There could be more <clears throat> than that. And only, <clears throat> excuse me, only three, <clears throat> three of them were given. The nucleus is really just an alignment that Lynn talked about. It's the alignment that's sort of dedicated to uh, aligning with the Christ, the planetary logos, and the avatar of synthesis. And then the petals <clears throat> were uh, attempts to draw on that energy and then distribute it subjectively to the fields of government, education, business, and that's the three we know about. <clears throat> the fourth one could be culture, we're not sure. So to get an idea of the nature of the center, we can use the law of correspondences to see what the center is within the human center system. Um, it's been called several things. We, it's been talked about a lot, but uh, one of the names for it is the light in the head. Another one is the heart center in the head. It's also called the midway point. And in Lucille's work, it's referred to as the cave. The cave in the center of the head, not the one in the heart. Um, you could think of this human center manifesting as the conscious relationship between the crown center and the ajna center. And um, in another sense, you could, you could think of it as the center that brings divine will and its intelligent expression into a synthetic relationship. And in that sense, it's a human center of synthesis. So even though it's a world center, it's also the units of it are actually um, these human centers of synthesis. So access to the world center is actually augmented by that, um, that human center. So, so how does this relate to the plan? Um, the energy of synthesis could be thought of as the synthesis of divine will, its creative expression in the substance of the three worlds, and the evolving synthetic relationship of these two. 
um, in the world, and I would say especially humanity right now, are in need of this synthetic energy. Uh, humanity seems to be floundering in its separations. And to the point that this floundering is actually invoking the energy of synthesis. So um, the plan, I think, has involved bringing forth the energy of synthesis and um, and it can be invoked and accessed by anyone, any person, or any group who invokes it from a true need. Okay, I'm done. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. And now, Greg and Teresa, will you please share the bridge to Maitreya? Hmm. <clears throat> thank you, Ray, and thank you, Henry. Uh, I'm going to be rather succinct about this, uh, but um, I wanted to just mention that uh, uh, I, in 1976, I began studying Buddhism with um, with Lucille, and that was the direction that she embarked on at the end of her life. So from that time until her passing in 1984, uh, I was a close student of hers and uh, she encouraged me to bring together the two threads of her life work, which were uh, the, um, the wisdom, the new thought form presentation of the wisdom and Tibetan Buddhism that she demonstrated in her own life and teaching how this is done by the, the grace connection to the what I call the Christ Buddha Maitreya. So the work of the bridge to Maitreya is to bring students who are interested in this particular approach through a series of, of uh, uh, structured classes that emphasize meditation and self-development and, and uh, brings them through, as I said, a series of uh, progressive classes so that they can establish themselves, their discipleship, their leadership um, uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a way that is authentic to them. We don't, um, uh, we're not a, a creed or a religion, but we're a center of human development. And uh, we have students in uh, several different countries. We teach over the uh, utilizing Zoom, uh, you know, the Zoom process. And um, we get our inspiration from, of course, Lucille and uh, and also the uh, the spirit and energy of of Maitreya. So uh, this is simply you know our 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 task and our approach and uh, and it's a it's a joyful process. So a very big voice to this and uh, answer to the question. My understanding of the plan is everyone across. Each and every being will awaken to the true nature of who they are. Mm -hmm. And we are, we are given that responsibility to help all of those beings that are calling out. Uh, there's been talk already today about, you know, the um, turmoil in our world. Mm -hmm. Well, what if that turmoil is really just all of these beings crying out for something more. Mm -hmm. And so the, the program that Greg and I work with, with a huge group, is very much about bringing the wisdom teachings, meditation, loving kindness to anybody that is showing any kind of yearning 
And so we work with people from the ground up, you could say, from people who are very beginners all the way along the path. And the essence of our work is the energy of loving kindness. Mm. And I think that's it. We'll move to the next. <laughs> but really great to be here and looking forward to meeting the rest of the group. Thanks so much, Greg and Teresa. Nice to share with you. Now, Margaret and Jeff will describe the fire of synthesis. Are you ready, you two? Thank you. Yes, I think Jeff is quite happy to be left out of this one. <laughs> so um, here we go. Hi, everyone. Um, we have been asked to give our understanding of the divine plan. Well, according to Mark, Master R, disciples take themselves far too serious. And the plan, not seriously enough. I think that's very true. It is not any one of us who will do whatever needs to be done. It is the plan itself as we permit that plan to move through us. That in its operation with substance will do the work. We have to permit that plan to live and act within us as its instrumentality. So therefore, when the call came from within to pay attention to synthesis, to work, the work began, the work with the fire of synthesis meditation. So what is this fire, you might ask? It is actually the diva of synthesis who function functions <clears throat> hang on <clears throat> it's early in the morning here excuse me half awake very early actually so it is the diva of synthesis whose function is to precipitate the divine plan into all forms each and every form every thought form everything it touches so the fire of synthesis consumes the forms. It transmutes them. All opposition to the divine plan is transmuted and gone. As a group, we are directing this fire, this diva, into those forms which are in need of change. And again, as I said, forms of any kind, even thought forms, which may have lost their initial purpose or intent. And these forms have often suffered destruction, distortion, because of human persona influences. So as this beautiful fire makes, made up of spirit, matter, and consciousness, now we're talking here about a blue-white fire for spirit, a golden fire for consciousness, and a violet fire for, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> matter, destroys the forms, this fire shows up the real purpose and the real purpose, once again, really comes to light for all of us. I guess it could be said that this is interfering with the divine plan because we bring about change with this fire of synthesis. But is this really so? 
I believe that humanity is ready for a new divine plan. One that means humanity does not have to suffer anymore in order to evolve. In order for its consciousness to lift to its highest spiritual counterpart. And this is where our work is making a difference. This is how the fire of synthesis is serving humanity through our meditations. Please join us in this most beautiful service of transformation at every new moon and or if a world situation may demand special attention. We would welcome you to serve in this way. The contact details are in your chat box. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Margaret. Now, Jonathan, Lirita, and Deborah will share with us subjective group leadership. Thank you. Well, uh, hello, everyone. It's a great privilege and a joy to be gathered in this uh, circle uh, with you all. Uh, I work very closely with Deborah and Lirita, and I thought to really lead in, really, uh, again, with such gratitude for those who've gone before, um, with a very simple question. What is it we all share in common throughout the world group, throughout the world community? Simply our alignment to the divine plan and to the Christ, the heart center of hierarchy. Some few, a line has been mentioned with the higher triangle. The Lord of our world, or Shambhala, the avatar of synthesis, and the Christ. And we were told that the avatar of synthesis came into a specific relationship with the Buddha and the Christ and hierarchy at the end of the Second World War. So in our work, we have come to recognize something of the nature of the energy of the avatar and take this opportunity to add awareness along with Magritte and, and Lynn and, and the others with Henry and so forth. We're told that the energy is available to all of us within the world group who can call upon it and in so doing, can help shift the tide of human affairs in favor of the reappearance and the decision in 2025. The energy of the avatar is new to this planet and cannot be differentiated. I repeat those words. The energy of the avatar is new and cannot be differentiated. So it is that type of energy that will, by its nature, absorb an apparent pair of opposites and will radiate through the group a new synthesis in consciousness as a new state of being. So in our group work, and it's a privilege to work with you, Deborah Lirita, as a triangle. We've been developing a service initiative over some years, which we speak broadly of as subjective group leadership in the nation. And we've been developing this sort of in parallel, if you will, with the Nations Lab, the Creative Nations Lab. And some of you would have been present at the snapshot that was given by the group in 2021 for the United States of America and recently giving a voice to the spirit of the nation last May. 
So as, or rather in the role of subjective group leadership, we seek to work in mediation between hierarchy and humanity as a developing causal consciousness between first and third aspects, which is the magnetic nature of consciousness itself. One of our activities on a monthly basis is a council gathering, which is working to develop a model for the ideation of the new civilization through the petal functions, through the nucleus and 12 subpetals or seed groups of a solar lotus. Another initiative links the spirit of the nation with the frequency of we the people. I'd like to hand over now to Deborah to speak to them. Uh, you're muted, uh, Deborah. Thank you, Jonathan. So about four years ago, um, several members of the Wisdom Group uh, came together uh, and this triangle emerged um, to focus on an initiative that was outlined by Master R uh, with respect to the nation of the US or we, we call it America we, as opposed to the Americas. Um, and we've been working for four years um, to refine this process of group meditation on a weekly basis um, that identifies as a group soul and identifies then as the soul within the etheric body of humanity. And then as that group soul recognizes and calls forth the soul of this nation, it's like a very soul of US, America, and calling to waking of the deva of America, the US, and to begin the integration of the soul and the devic substance into an integrated conscious soul incarnate, if you will, we call Disciple America, which is palpable at this point. And this meditation takes the Disciple America and the group consciousness into the alignment with the higher triangle of M, D, K, and R, but also the, Ash the avatar of synthesis, um, planetary logos and the Christ, bringing that energy down through the group, down into Disciple America and out into We the People, and then carrying that energy from We the People through um, the, the, the branches of government, executive, legislative, judicial, how it reflects that triangle in the states as well, through the Pentagon, through the, the court system, and so as this energy goes through all these aspects of the body of America, by the soul of America and the soul of the group and the synthesis center, um, it's, it's both a transmutative. So each of those, the cabinet, the presidency, the everything gets transmutational attention, but also just energized by the energy of synthesis. There's this purifying new energy cycling through the entire body of the nation. So- um, And would Lyrita uh, just- let me, yeah. let me just, just yeah. add one more thing. That's what we do with the America meditation, but we also have an adjunct service activity called soul therapy that is a transmutative focus that can be brought to a situation, a condition, a war, unrest in a particular area, 
or to bring uh, several nations together. So it's a dynamic, ongoing, developing technique that we are spearheading. Thank you. Um, my function in the group is more so of uh, kind of holding the energy of the heart center. And um, there are a couple uh, ideas that I have in reference to ashram of synthesis that I wanted to share with you. Um, our earth, in effect, is a laboratory for synthesizing opposites, which gives this planetary and solar system a peculiar significance in the universal life. Our synthesized, synthesized earth will be a seed crystal for synthesis in the universe, a point from which the synthesis will radiate and spread. Our earth is developing into a center of cosmic synthesis, a cave center within the solar life. And we can experience and feel that happening right now. It's extremely palpable here in the United States. Um, as we watch the political stage, especially the political stage right now. The first effect the energy of synthesis has on any condition is to clarify existing polarities in preparation for raising them into at one of synthesis. This clarification temporarily increases the opposition of the polarities to the process of synthesis. The group heart center is responsible for the- Can you speak up, up just a little bit, Larita? Thank you. The group heart center, is that better? It is responsible for the second ray group functions, including education, healing, communication, culture, religion. The polarities it includes responsibilities for are the group guardians. These provide the love wisdom which holds the group together as a group. They are the heart center of the group. The group leader this individual will constitute the head center of the group and will provide the first ray drive, which will enable the group to accomplish its purpose. And the group relations, public relations center, these bring the fact of the group to the attention of the outer world. They act as the throat center, so to speak, of the group. And lastly, the group nucleus. They are the ones who make possible the form through which the activity of group expression can manifest. Thank you so much, Larita, Deborah, and Jonathan. I would like to make an executive decision because we had planned to do two more um, sharings with you but at this stage I think in the essence of time we will pass on Henry's training centre and resound and we'll have Tara do her session on the centre retreats and gatherings and then we'll try and open it up for dialogue. Thank you Tara. Hello everybody. Sorry to miss Henry. I was looking forward to hearing that, and I know we are all kind of. I've been talking for a while. I'm appreciating all the sharings. You know, I wanted to bring first the the question is so powerful. So what are what are we doing? How we understand what services and what is our part? And uh, I love uh, Teresa's answer about serving the Christ and becoming the Christ. Uh, I, I would normally like to say that uh, my goal here in this life is to bring, to co collaborate in bringing the fifth kingdom of in heaven, of heaven into earth. So the, the life of the soul, I feel like this is something that we disciples are working everywhere 
to become a soil infused and to um, model by doing as much as we can, we sometimes fail, of course, uh, how it is to be a, a soul infused persona, how we bring this in every aspect of our lives. So I think that's a big, uh, a big goal. And we know humanity is preparing for the first initiation uh, in mass. So we need to awaken to the reality of the soul. I think our group, you know, in our very diverse uh, ways of, of being, we are working in, in this direction. Many of us, we are students, we were students and continue being students of uh, Alice Bailey. And then we met Lucille's teachings and many of us would come of, you know, referring to both and realizing the synthetic nature of Lucille's offering. My, my friends and colleagues um, already mentioned some of the characteristics of how we work together. We are, uh, an, organize, we are an organism, not an organization, so very seven ray. We use a lot of the group dialogue and uh, as we study and we engage in service projects, we dialogue with each other. We practice cooperative leadership. Um, sometimes we do it again better than others, but that's a learning process. I think we need to learn how to cooperate as leaders so that we model and we create a path, a pathway for humanity because we need that cooperation to solve our human condition and our human uh, problems. Um, we have done some things that we call uh, conferences, leadership conferences. We did a couple of times where we just listen and take in what is the service activity of others. And we support subjectively what they're doing. We also engage in group process. Uh, what that means is that uh, we take problems of humanity and we kind of bring them among ourselves and we we try to find solutions among ourselves so if we uh, solve the problem of a um, you know cooperative leadership for example or finances as, as in the old days the group had or or you know a right um, a relationship with each other if we are able to find solutions and work sometimes in the heat of the dynamics and those solutions are inclusive and synthetic we are again creating pathways for humanity uh, some of us, uh, you know, are, well, all of us work a lot subjectively, like telepathic report, meditation. We create seed thoughts to offer humanity that uh, present solutions or synthetic ideas to, uh, to respond to the challenges of our world. And many of us also have objectives, activities of service, some internationally, some others in our small communities, some serving just to your mother or your partner, just learning to find right relationships within every act of our lives. Um, just to say, like super brief, we met as the wisdom. Um, some of us, we were studying Lucille and we were very curious who was out there that came from that original group and continue studying these teachings. So we created the first wisdom gathering in Ohio, California in 2007. That's 17 years ago. Uh, many of us met, almost 60 people. It was amazing to meet and see how many uh, resonant brothers and sisters doing the work. Since then, we have been meeting every year. So we have three events of the year. One is this uh, wisdom gatherings. They started in Ohio. That's a... Uh, the Heart Center, then we went to Washington DC, it's part of the Head Center. Now all of them are taking place in Estes Park, California as the Thin Sea Center because of the amazing uh, nature of, of the presence of that synthetic energy that you can feel when you are in Estes Park. And any of you are welcome to join us anytime. We have, um, during the lockdowns, we started like everybody else to have to work online. And then we realized that it was really good to do both. So now every gathering is both in person and online so that more people can attend. We celebrate three events, as I was saying, this uh, wisdom gatherings uh, often in October, although this year will be in August in sync with the effort that we're all doing for the serious festival. Um, we also meet every WESAC because the energies are particularly powerful and beautiful as we meet there. And the third time a year we meet is um, in the winter. We call the winter retreat. It's really meeting the dark 
of the of of the starting of the year and in meditation in silence let's see what themes uh, come into our awareness that we want to make the focus for service uh, through the year so i would say just to finish that our group is very diverse as you all have seen we all have inclinations to serve in different fields which is great some is healing and politics and education and studying the teachings, meditation, and so forth. Some, sometimes we talk about petal work, referring to these different aspects of work. Um, and to finish, just to say that we include our sisters and brothers that have passed uh, the veil and that they are working from the other side, uh, because there's so much uh, power as well from the inner planes as we all collaborate in this, in this group effort. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tara. Um, folks, it's it's been very nice to be able to share with you some of the functions of the wisdom group and to whet your appetite, so to say, about some of the things we try to engage in. But now we've come to the part where we'd like to invite everybody to participate in open dialogue to make comments, to pose questions, and to really consider that question that we framed at the start. The only thing I would stress here, please, if we could just speak one at a time, and we should get along quite well. Thank you. The floor is now open for everybody to make comments. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for your wonderful presentations. Uh, deeply appreciated, thank you. Yes, me too. Thank you very much for this rich um, uh, presentation of, uh, of what the Wisdom Group is. If I could ask a question, how do you work together? These different, you know, these different groups that belong to one uh, big wisdom group. What is the dynamics uh, between your different groups? How is this group life um, weaving together, this intergroup life? Thank you. David or Henry, would you like to answer that question, please? We, we are fortunate to live in an age of uh, Zoom. So just like we're doing right now, able to meet from all over the world, uh, we, we have group meetings. Uh, like Tara was talking about, uh, we saw that's a, pretty much a lot of people show up to that. We, most are in their own homes, but some are in Estes Park at the same time. And um, there's a thing, I think we just did uh, one, of, one of the things, it's called the Leadership Conference. And, you know, people tell us what they're doing. Like I learned a lot today, um, but occasionally, <clears throat> occasionally we'll get together and just explain what we've been doing, how we're seeing things now. And, um, um, but, you know, I, th I, I think the, the, the cohesiveness is just the understanding of our own kind of intergroup soulness that goes through it. I mean, we all kind of relate, uh, you know, like Alexander was saying, you know, like, what are these subgroups? And <laughs> we don't think of it as subgroups. We're just one group, but we're operating along different initiatives. And um, so it's not like we have to 
it, leadership conference is really more like coordination and cooperation rather than um, linking us together. We're already together. We're already one group. So you're self-organizing already. You know, the thing is, we don't, we don't objectively organize. We, we, I mean, we will do that when we need to. Like, if we're going to meet together, like today, there was a lot of organizing going on. Yeah. But um, we don't, we don't objectively organize. We don't have a universal, um, um, you know, um, group organization. We don't, we just don't do it that way. Um I, I think everybody that's associated with this would realize there's no leader, there's no teacher, there's no creator, you know, it's just like we all have those capacities and we all um we all use them as need arises. And you know, there's I think we cooperatively lead and we, you know, it's like there's no leader, but we're, but we're just a group of leaders. There's no, mm -hmm. you know, it, it kind of works that way. I'm, I'm, it's like a f flock of birds, huh? More or less, yeah. Beautiful. I would, I would like to Thank add you. two things to that, Henry um, and Uta. First of all, like Henry just said, a lot of us are teachers. And uh, we meet in classes. That's how I became introduced and began meeting people um, and, you know, taking classes and hearing about service activities that one person or another group are doing. But I want to share just a keynote phrase or sentence that I think will help understanding this uh, is this dynamic, it's uh, from Lucille's work. It says the power of the disciple of synthesis is the power of divine purpose synthesized with human need. And that's very much a dynamic. I mean, because we're, yes, we're aligned with this really uh, high, amazing new energy, but um who was it? I think Lynn was describing that when it was broken up in Atlantis, that the, the members who may have been the seed members this time started at the very beginning of the evolutionary were were demoted, as it were, <laughs> to go through the whole human thing again. So we're 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 trying to be attuned to world need. That's the thing, or the need in the environment, sensitivity to world need. We look at it, we bring in synthesis, we see the opposites, we work as a group to bring that energy down to um, transmute the situation. So the need is the key of how we or organize any effort, as it were. And it may just meet a need and then disband, or it may continue. Does that make sense? Thank you, Deborah. Does uh, I would like to chime in with one little comment here. And Lynn alluded to this earlier in his hearing, and it's about sounding of the note. And I think we all know this. And inherently, we have this sounding of the note that takes place somewhere amongst the wisdom group and brings together all of those uh, members of the group on a common cause. And it's very much like you were just uh, explaining then, Deborah, with Lucille's quotation. And this is something that is unknown but or unseen, but just brings it together every time it's necessary on the need. I just you mentioned one. I'd like to chime in just real quick and say that the trainings that Lucille put forth were designed to rebuild the Antikrana, therefore giving us access to our greater nature and our oneness. Sorry, Teresa, I didn't mean to interrupt you. 
Ray, no, you no mentioned problem. Lucille Cedar Corinne, and she got a oh, sorry, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to Go say, I think as a basis of everything here is Lucille Cedar Corinne's teachings, and that's where we all started off in this group, anyway. We branch out in many different ways, but then the teachings from Lucille Cedarcrims uh, have reverberated in all the groups that have been forming under this umbrella group of the wisdom group. I I really liken it to a, a safe harbor. Here's the wisdom group. This is an umbrella and you can go in here and you can dock your boat and you can go and spread your word and, you know, have a group and, um everybody branches in different directions and in the end we all come together as one thank you Margaret. and that very point good coming together one is what i wanted to speak to speak of the one thing that i haven't heard mentioned here is that all of the relationships are characterized by absolute love mm. it is those lines of loving energy that link us together and we have total respect for each other. And I think that that's why the group works. We spent a lot of time many years ago when we first came together cultivating the group heart centre. We did a lot of very difficult work at that time mm. as we started to um, transform our own need is more important than our competitiveness and we all just surrendered to the group heart and i think that that's why the group works so well together hmm. awesome. anybody else like to make a comment i would just like to add that uh that one thing that i so appreciate about the group is it's openness to work with other groups i mean many of us are members of other groups outside of what we call the wisdom group. Um, but that synthesis of, of the world group all over the world, uh, I think that's such a beautiful thing. And uh, with a pr great appreciation for all the groups that work in the, in the world, all the wonderful work that's being done through all the wonderful groups, uh, seeking to bring loving kindness and, and right relationship, human relationship and with all the kingdoms. And so we so appreciate everybody that joined today. And uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you Kathleen. And thank you, friends. Unfortunately, the time runs quicker than what we wish to share uh, today. It's always the same story. But um, I want to address one question that was in the uh, uh, comments uh, um, Marty asked about if there's uh, uh, links to various uh, groups or parts of one group that share it today and so maybe you could put uh, those links in the chat now that uh, other groups could connect with you and continue what we started today so let's just use this uh, minute or two that's left of our program just to put those links and please copy those links and we will try to make them available later and there's one more thing i want to mention um and ask henry to speak on th and that is uh as tara mentioned uh the wisdom group as many other groups who join us today uh will participate in the leo series festival telepathic experiment intergroup telepathic experiment and uh, which will be happening in less than two weeks during the time of the uh, leo full moon and if your group is not participating in that please reach out to us and we will share information about that and as part of this experiment uh we encourage different groups to organize their meetings the physical plane meetings so zoom meetings and the Wisdom Group organizes their own physical plane meeting in Colorado. And I want to ask Henry just to say a couple of words about that. And if anyone is interested, maybe to reach out, how to reach out to you and be in touch. We are going to share the space. Um, 
I have a cabin in Estes Park, charming, 120 years old, part of it. And uh, it's in the mountains. It's a beautiful spot surrounded by 14, 13,000 foot peaks. And uh, it's a great place to be. So we're going to meet there and open to anyone who wishes to come. So far, there's just a handful uh, coming. But if anybody wishes to come, you can get in touch with me and just let me know. I put my email address in the chat. It's henryguy at mac.com. And uh, love to have you. Thanks, Thanks, Henry Alexander. Just before you close us off, Alexander, I would like to formally close this session. And so may I ask Lynn to close us, please. Take us out. Thank you. With gratitude to Master DK and Lucille Cedarcrans for bringing through the great invocation, let us join together in saying the, the original version of the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ be turned to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, everybody. And with this, I want to invite Daniela to close us on behalf of the 2025 initiative. Daniela is in our group, focalizes the seventh ray. And please, Daniela, lead us in this closing. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we will close with the last sentence of the great application, where we will invoke light and love and power, bring it, bring it, bringing it into the plane of the world. Finishing with our hands in the in this gesture of recognition, of prayer, of um, gratitude. So let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. We'll bring our just uh, hands into the gesture of blessing. Put our both of our hands into the mudra of dharma, dharma charka, yes. Um, and then pronounce the first om like this. The second one, keeping the dharma charma and lowering our arms. And then the third om with our open hands, symbolizing sharing and, um, well, welcome, welcoming into the circle. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Oh. Oh.